wetlands a very important uh, ecological place and a place with huge biological diversity now conserving these wetlands have been really important ramsar convention has worked way forward to protect these wetlands and how we'll discuss in this lecture the idea is first of all understanding that generating awareness about wetlands and preserving wetlands is really important so second of february every year is what is celebrated as the world wetland day now what is wetland 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 is a area which is saturated with water now when it is saturated with water it could be either seasonal it could be permanent in nature but it has its own distinct ecosystem now in this ecosystem you would have birds animals small insects but a range of plant and animal life which would be uh, protected in that environment and would which would have an important role in protecting that environment as well right but over the years we have seen with industrialization with urbanization with mining activities that there has been a large scale exploitation of these wetlands there has been other definitions of wetland as well so one other definition says that it is an accumulation of water after a uh, rainfall now as the rainfall comes in the land gets wet and now this land would be considered as a wetland because the land has become wet but the idea would be the water table would rise and this would be the area where you would have hydrophytes that means plants which can live in water and which has hybrid structure for the soil that can be seen ramsar convention took place into 1971 and this convention was named as ramsar because it was held in the city of ramsar in iran and under the article 1.1 of uh the convention and article 2.1 of the con uh, convention two important things were brought in so under the article 1.1 wetlands have been classified as a marshy area a fen a petland where natural or artificial temporary or permanent water is seen now this water could be static it could be flowing it could be salty it could be fresh it could be marine but the depth at which the low tide does not exceed 6 meters is the criteria now this is something very very important to remember this was under the article 1.1 later on article 2.1 came in same under the ramsar convention which said that wetland also incorporates coastal zones and riparian regions adjacent to the wetland and this could be islands as well with a depth more than 6 meters at low tide lying within the wetland area now these two are the most standardized definitions of wetland which are nowadays used so if it is at a depth of low tide up to 6 meters it is considered as wetland but if it is a riparian coastal area or an island it can be more than 6 meters at low tide as well in 2016 there were worldwide around 2266 wetlands which were given of which uk had maximum number of wetlands followed by bolivia now there are certain ways in which a country registers its wetland the process for registration and uh the the methodology under the montrix record we would discuss as we move forward in this lecture but the idea is these policy decisions have been taken by these countries to protect certain areas within their territory also the official name of the treaty which was the convention on wetland of the international importance which was especially for the waterfowl habitat previously has now been incorporating all the uh, flora and fauna in the region and the original emphasis which was specifically for the water birds has now moved for plants animals and all related all related species now these wetlands have been really important why because they are the place where water can store in so they can control any kind of excess floods the ground water gets recharged in these areas so the nearby areas have a relatively higher water table because of it this is a region where biodiversity can be maintained and our food pyramid can be maintained we require every order of the uh, food chain 
to have a successful food pyramid into existence and therefore or a food chain or a food web into existence and therefore the biodiversity at wetlands become an important aspect again the products that are obtained from wetland these products are the plant species which are found there the riparian species which are found there and it has an important role in climate change why because these are the areas where carbon sequestration takes place so it these are basically the sinks for the carbon dioxide as well now as we discussed previously these wetlands are being converted the areas which are close to the wetland lying into the wetland area are converted for various purpose they could be mining it could be industries it could be urban area it could be grazing zones it could be agriculture even dump yards in uh, urban areas there could be diversion of flow of water from the uh, wetlands to be utilized for irrigation projects uh, commercial developments in the region can be also some of the factors which affect the wetland also uncontrolled exploitation of the groundwater would lower the water table and wetlands can get destroyed they can become arid areas the pollution from land water air land all of these affect the wetlands so conservation of wetland becomes really important in india following the wetland conservation under ramsar act uh, and even before that we had certain things into mind for example uh india has been a signatory to ramsar convention and also to the cbd which is the convention for biological diversity ministry of forest and uh, ministry of environment and forest government of india elaborates various programs for the wetland conservation and management in india uh some of the important programs that we take into account as coastal zone regulation forest conservation air pollution water pollution prevention wildlife conservation forest act fishery act maritime zones of india by regulating the fishing by the foreign vessels which are done environmental development macro uh, level action strategies for biodiversity so all these are some of the uh, things that have been taken into account by india now be it india or any other country when we talk about wetland and its protection first is the strategy the strategy at national level which includes three things first is the conservation management prevention of any kind of loss and sustainable management that can be done right so that is what is called as the strategy at national level the next is once the strategy is there we enforce it so that the wetlands can be protected to enforce it there has to be a proper planning and management which has to be done to plan we need to research into the region and then create an inventory inventory is nothing but a list now for example some of the important inventories we can have is the asian inventory of wetlands or asian wetland directory that was in 1989 then we have wetland directory published by ministry of environment and forest 1990 uh, there is identification of new wetlands survey conducted by world wildlife uh, forum so all those are kind of inventories which are done now once we have the inventory that these are the wetland sites that could be identified the potential sites the important sites how we can work on that then we build in our capacity have a coordinated approach for it and finally with the help of community participation the sites can be actually protected and managed so this process applies not only to one nation but to uh, all the nations and this is one of the ways through which wetlands are preserved and conserved now as i said in 2020